Brian Phillippe has a lot to celebrate. On Thursday, the 49-year-old actor told fans he hit a major milestone in his sobriety journey, revealing on Instagram that September 13th marks the longest he's gone without substances. Quote, Officially the longest I've gone since I was a teen without some kind of nicotine or marijuana in my system, among other things. Feeling thankful for the freedom that comes with breaking addictions and dependency on substance. Sobriety, clarity, and spiritual connectiveness feels real good, he wrote alongside a mere selfie. The Cruel Intention star even made a joke about his sobriety on his Instagram story, telling fans, quote, My only remaining addictions are toothpicks and self-improvement. Ryan isn't the only A-lister who has opened up about his sobriety this year. Lucy Hale, Daryl Sabara, and The Hills' Jason Whaler have all gotten honest about being sober. Lucy Hale celebrated a major self-love milestone this Valentine's Day. On Tuesday, the Pretty Little Liars alum shared an emotional message on Instagram about being one year sober, posting a pic of a cute cake with pink icing, rainbow sprinkles, and a big one year in the middle. Captioning the post, bear with me, this is an alternative Valentine's Day post. This is a post about self-love and about the greatest thing I've ever done. On January 2nd, 2023, I celebrated one year of sobriety. While this journey has mostly been private, I felt compelled tonight to let anyone who is struggling know that you are not alone and you are loved. Lucy received love and support in the comments from many of her former PLL co-stars and former Disney stars, including Shay Mitchell, who simply commented a red heart emoji. Troy and Belisario wrote, Congratulations to you, Lucy. This is brave and cool and inspirational, and you deserve all the self-love and love from others that goes with it. Sasha Patrice penned multiple happy face and loving emojis, followed by a simple love you. Janelle Parrish wrote, You're incredible, with a white heart emoji. And Demi Lovato, who has had her own struggles with sobriety, commented how honored she was to be on the 33-year-old actress's journey with her and vice versa. Penning, I'm so proud of you, sis. I love you so much. Thank you for being a part of my journey and allowing me to be a part of yours. Being alone is kind of a trigger for me. I know now, like, when I'm alone... Soulmate. Daryl Sabara is opening up about his road to recovery. The Spy Kids actor joined wife Megan Trainer for the newest episode of her podcast, Working On It, and detailed his sobriety journey, revealing how therapy helped him identify his substance use triggers. Daryl explained that the discovery made it easier for him to understand why he used to turn to alcohol and marijuana as coping mechanisms, and admitted that his commitment to change has come with challenges. Figuring out that being alone is kind of a trigger for me. I know now, like when I'm alone, Soulmate. to be like ready for the little bastard inside my head to be like, hey, buddy, it's just us now. <laughs> what are we going to do? It's party. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and like that's huge to know like that it's coming instead of just being like going straight to booze or weed. That's the other thing too is I stop weed as well. Yeah, see, I feel that like was that was even for harder for you. That was yeah. hard for me because there was no like- you're a delight. There was no repercussions of weed. Yeah. I never had like a bad experience on weed. It was only great. And I had a great experience with you high near me, you know? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like, ugh, you're annoying. I was like, you little puppy dog. <laughs> um, but I, one piece of advice that my therapist gave me that was so helpful was she just said, uh, if you want to be on your A game, maybe consider full sobriety. Daryl is rarely alone these days. The 30-year-old and his music superstar wife are parents to nearly two-year-old son, Riley, and the couple has loved giving fans a peek into their parenting life, including the adorable time a then-infant Riley's baby babble sounded suspiciously like he was saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Megan and Daryl recently celebrated their four-year wedding anniversary and are never shy about sharing their love for one another. And it's no surprise to see Megan so supportive of her husband. The singer has been candid about her own mental health, too. Back in 2018, Megan shared with Access Hollywood how she faced serious anxiety after multiple vocal cord surgeries left her with uncertainty about her career. I had my second vocal surgery, which was tough because once you do it once, you're like, cool, I'll never do this again, and happened right after, and 
Uh, it was exactly a year after I won my Grammy, and, and the surgery was on the day of the Grammys wow. the following year. That was just because that was the day the doctor had available. So it was very dark. It was very, oh, life goes up and down, and here it's happening to me right now. When you're silent and when you have to be mute, you have to be on vocal rest, you're alone with your thoughts. Even if you have your loved ones near you, I had Daryl with me every day helping me, but you're talking to yourself and you can get really scary sometimes. It turned into a dark place of anxiety and I didn't, I was uneducated about anxiety. I didn't know it could physically make you feel like you have the flu or cripple you and make you stay home all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I had to educate myself on that, see a lot of doctors and climb out of it. And now, and with the help of Daryl and exercise and eating well, I feel so good, so healthy, so happy, and I can appreciate every moment now. You know, I went to, to 12, 13 different treatment centers, rested multiple times. My addiction took me not only to contemplation, but attempting suicide, and it was a really, really challenging time. Because perfect. Well, let's start at the beginning. 18 years ago, <sighs> you gosh. joined the second season of what would become the iconic show, Laguna Beach. Interesting time in my life. So mm -hmm. at 17, I was starting to struggle with school issues, addiction issues, mental health issues, and I was actually away at boarding school in Provo, Utah. Lo and behold, though, I come back, and some of the old cast were like, you got to meet Jason. So went to the rooftop, had my interview, and uh, the rest is history. I love Lauren. Jason became the notorious bad boy of the mega hit MTV series and its spin off The Hills and skyrocketed to fame overnight. But he says that only fueled his struggles with mental health and addiction. It created an identity that I was able to escape because what you saw on television is it was a character that was created and, and I wanted to live by that, which was like the partying out of control type of person. And so I, I fed into that. And that was really just a deflection from me really dealing with what I needed to deal with, which was myself. How much of what we saw as quote unquote Jason was the true Jason? You gotta see 100% of the real side of somebody that was really sick. Mm -hmm. You gotta see somebody mm -hmm. who's really struggling. Over the next few years, Jason was arrested numerous times, did several stints in rehab, and even tried to take his own life. But it was something that happened after becoming sober in 2010 that changed everything. What would you consider your lowest point? At five years of sobriety, I ended up, ended up relapsing on Adderall. I ended up going down a, a, a spiraling on and off for two and a half, three years. That landed me at the first floor at Hogue Hospital while my wife was giving birth on the third floor with my daughter. And so to not be able to be present or in the moment, to remember one of the greatest memories or moments of your life is uh, something that I've, I've forgiven myself, but it was, it's really hard. Jason, now sober for nearly four years, has moved out of Orange County with his wife and two kids and says he's finally taken back control of his life. When you look back at that young kid on these shows, what would you say to him now? It's going to be okay. There's a way out. There's solutions. There's an opportunity to be able to talk about it and uh, share that, and, and you're not alone. And there's, there's hope all around you. It's so good to see him doing so well. And yes. Jason is teaming up with psychiatrist Dr. Daniel Amen for the Change Your Brain Foundation, which seeks a new approach to dealing with mental health.